Hey everyone, Dylan here, and in today's video, um, last about last week, I made a top five list of my top five favorite game video game consoles, and it was 16 minutes, and I hoped it would be shorter than that, and that was with me not going into as much detail uh, as I was going to, and so I'm gonna, in this video, go into depth detail of when I got the consoles of my top five list, the game consoles I've played, and all that sort of stuff, and it'll be probably even a longer video, or maybe it'll be about the same since I'm not ranking things, but um, I may say a couple, th a few, I may say some of the same stuff I said in that video, but with more in-depth uh, details. Hit the mic, my bad. Anyways, so I'll just start with um, uh, the, um, one of the consoles. Um, <clears throat> so in, I'm just gonna name off all the consoles I've played and then like what I've, what I've kind of had. So the most like Xbox I've played is like, I've played with my friend. I played an Xbox 360, I played, um, I played one of the skate games. I played a UFC fighting game and somehow I was beating my friend. I don't know how. And then we also played Call of Duty, which he destroyed me in because I never played Call of Duty ever. Um, uh, first person shooter games were not my thing. And uh, he just kept killing me and was having fun killing me every time. Also, I was using a controller I was not used to using. So that's kind of been my only thing with Xbox. Not because I hate Xbox. It's through my family and what we've played, I just played Nintendo and PlayStation. Like, that's just how it was. So I don't have any attachment to Xbox. So um, all the consoles that I have actually played, actual consoles, not emulation, was uh, when I was a kid, I have played a Nintendo, an NES. I've played that a little bit, probably, but um, more, more so over than that, I've played the SNES, Super Nintendo, and I have played the uh, Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance. Those are two other consoles that I really loved um, and I played as a kid. I actually have played an Atari <laughs> we, uh, with just the, the freaking button. I think it had one button in like a stick. And like, um, yeah, so I don't know which version of the Atari that was, but uh, I have played an Atari. Um, but, um... Other consoles that I have owned, I've owned a GameCube, I've owned a Nintendo 64, I've owned a um, PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, I've owned several PlayStation 2s, I've owned several uh, two PlayStation 3s, um, we're still on our PS4, but it might, we might have to get a new one at some point, if, because if it, it dies, because it is five years old at this point, since we've had it, um, I have had um, the uh, 3DS, the new Nintendo 3DS XL. Um, I think that's about... Those are all the consoles that I've really played. I've played some computer games too, if you want to count a co co PC as a console, I guess. That's not really a console, but I have played some PC games too. Very little, though. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the consoles that I have mostly uh, played. I never... Um, I went. I never had a Wii. I did eventually. I did think at some point about buying a Wii, but I just never did it. Um, I never ended up doing it, and uh, then eventually I went blind. So I never really played a, any Wii games. Never played Wii U games, and of course I was blind uh, by the time I think. Well, actually, was I? No, I wasn't. But I was. I think I. I still had sight. I believe when the Switch came out. Maybe. Maybe. I don't, when did the Switch come out? Oh, I went blind uh, in, like, near the end of November 2017. So, um, I don't know if it was out or not before I went blind, but it was probably close. So, I never ended up getting a Switch or seeing any of the Switch games or anything like that. So, that's kind of where I stand on that. But, to get to some of the, like, memories of getting my, like, first kind of consoles and stuff, um... I don't remember when I got a Nintendo or a uh, Game Boy, like a Game Boy Color. Don't remember that, but I do remember getting a Game Boy Advance, and that was pretty cool. Um, my grandparents ended up getting it for me and my brother, and we had to share it. And it was so cool at the time, you know. It was just this cool console. Um, it was like kind of you know more like wide, 
it uh, had the different kind of cartridges that you would put into it and it played these like cooler uh, better looking games and then it could also play the Game Boy Color games so it, it had like an expansion like it's like oh sweet I can play my other Game Boy games too my Game Boy Color games so it is a really neat uh, thing and a fond memory I have of getting it for a, cr a Christmas one year um, I don't know how old I was when we got it but probably I was probably less than like nine years old uh, so, but that was kind of my experience with the Game Boy. I don't remember when we got a Nintendo 64 or, um, stuff like that. So I'll just move to kind of like the next kind of consoles, kind of in order a little bit. I don't a hundred percent remember, but, um, or, or maybe not even that. I think I'm just going to go to the GameCube next. So the GameCube, uh, the GameCube was an awesome system. People didn't end up at first liking it, I don't think, or maybe I'm wrong, because I think it got a lot more popular later on, because the GameCube had a lot of cool games, and it had the four, you know, controllers, everybody's still using the controllers to this day for the GameCube, um, they really love it, it had the mini discs, because as I said before, um, Nintendo has to always be different, can't have full size, di size discs, nope, have to make them small and different, of course, but, uh, you know, whatever, um, and a lot of other cool things you could do with the GameCube was, uh, plug your, um, you could plug like game, uh, give Game Boy stuff up to it and do different stuff like that. I never did that, but that was something you could do. So that was neat. And just the cool, awesome Nintendo games, Super Mario Sunshine, Paper Mario, The Thousand Year Door, um, just a bunch of other different games other than just that. But um, uh, there were so, so many good games on the Nintendo uh, GameCube, but... How I first got introduced to it was not owning it, actually, for one of my birthdays. And this was kind of bad on my dad's part. Um, I I think I was old enough, though, to understand it. Um, but uh, don't do this, by the way. My dad, for one of my birthdays, he ended up renting the GameCube for me. so Because we had a video store and that you could rent video game consoles. And for my birthday, I don't remember how many days, maybe two, three I like got it or maybe even for five. I had it for a few days and uh, he rented me the uh, Nintendo GameCube and a, a couple of games. I the one game I think he rented maybe, I don't know if it was more than one, but it, it was Pokemon Coliseum. And um, the problem with this was I, you know, you have to give it back. And um, like I said, don't, I don't think you should rent your kid a console Make them excited and then be like, well, you got to give it back. <laughs> like, I, like I said, I was old enough to understand that I had to give it back. And I was a little bit disappointed and sad that I had to. Uh, but I was old enough to understand it and, you know, get over it, basically. But I think it's a bad gift idea. So, like, points for my dad for trying, but that one wasn't a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, so I did try to start playing it a little bit. And I remember I kept having issues with the disc. It, like or something, not necessarily the disc, but it, like, keeps stopping or maybe even flip up, like, just... The GameCube had an issue. I don't remember what it was. It was so long ago, but, like, you know, you can't read the game or whatever, or it stopped. So I had issues playing it to begin with, but that was my first instance of it. I didn't really... I don't even remember how much I played of Coliseum or how far I got, but it was just kind of like an eh kind of thing. I don't know. So uh, that was my first instance of it, and I don't even remember having much fun with it. I mean... I, it was a cool experience at the time, but then later on, I ended up we ended up getting a GameCube. I don't know. I think it was for Christmas. Yeah, it was for another Christmas. We got a GameCube, and uh, my dad got us. He got we got two games. Um, I don't remember what the other one was, but um, the main game that came with the console was Pokemon XD: Gale of Darkness. And uh, so that was like one of my first GameCube games to actually play. So I did event I did technically play through that before I played through Coliseum, which is interesting, right? Um, since XD Gale of Darkness is kind of a sequel to it. Uh, but uh, so there was another game we got with it, and I don't remember what it was, but uh, we ended up eventually here and there getting other games for it and playing it and having fun and... Um, all that I remember having playing Super Mario Sunshine and I think I had like I don't know 30 40 shine sprites um and then uh, my a little like one of my nieces or nephews went on it I think it was a niece and uh she they ended up deleting all my data and I was so pissed 
But uh, that's just a memory I have of that. But eventually later on, I think they ended up selling it or something or doing something with it. So uh, whenever I ended up becoming, like later on, I was like 18, I eventually bought another one so I could replay the old games. And this is where I was like complaining, like uh, I bought the GameCube for $20. $20! This was in 2013. I understand the game was old by this point, but $20 and the GameCube was not in bad condition. It was in perfect condition. It was completely fine. And I paid $25 for probably every other game. Um, there was only one that was $20, but the rest were like $25. And I'm like, how are these games more expensive than the console? How's the GameCube just $20? <laughs> it was so sad. It was so weird. But that's that was my experience with the GameCube. Great console. Loved it. Um, loved playing Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door on it. And um, many, many other fun games to play on it. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's the GameCube. So next we're going to go over to the PS1. I don't have much memories of the PS1 completely of when we got it, but it was really cool when we did. Uh, we finally got it. It could play music discs. That was really cool. And the cool PS1 games, I remember playing uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. Um, that was a, a game I played the heck out of, not knowing what I was doing and trying to learn the fusions and stuff. That was interesting. And then playing um, Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22. You know, when you're a kid, you don't understand how bad things are at the time right they seem really advanced and cool and then you get older and you're like wow that was bad that was bad and that's that's ultimate battle 22 and then of course i played dragon ball gt final bout that was a cool game i think i played tomba um i probably played some other games too i can't remember like a bunch of them but i think bloody roar was a game I played on there too. Um, played a bunch of different games on there. But uh, yeah, the PS1 was really cool and I have fond memories of it. But we get to the big one. The big one. One of my most favorite consoles of all time. And that would be the PS2. Because when I was a kid, um, I was grateful for... I Well, maybe not at the time, but definitely now. But because um, I was a kid, right? But I wanted a PS2 so bad because I was, you know, I had the PS1. Well, a lot of friends and people in that school and stuff had the PS2. I went to a friend's house and I got a taste of it. He had a PS2. And I played, um, we played, I, well, I don't even know if I got to play it. I think I watched him play it. And he played um, Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. And it was really cool, and he showed me, like, you could have these what-if fusions between Goku and Hercule, and uh, you could also have uh, Tien and uh, Yamcha fuse, and it was so cool. Um, I, of course, was stuck with PS1, so I didn't even see any of that, but... Um, my dad did have a PS2, and I hated it. I was like, man, why you gotta get all the cool stuff? And, you know, I should have been happy with what I was. And I was. It was better than nothing. I could have had nothing, man. So, looking back, I am so grateful for everything that I had. But, when I got the PS2, it's such a huge upgrade, man. The freaking... Just the games... Just the games were, like, cool and a big upgrade. And looked so amazingly good i really loved it and then you know you have these nicer cool games and the huge great ps2 library but then you find out you can still play your ps1 games on your ps2 which was amazing as a kid you're like holy crap this is a ps1 and a ps2 in one and then you could still listen to music as you could but then they're like, no, 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 we're not done yet. It played DVDs, man. It was a DVD player, too. So it played PS1, PS2 games, played CDs, and played DVDs. This thing was freaking insane at the time. Like, I'm just saying, man. Like, going from the PS1 to it was insane. It was a huge jump. And um, I don't think the, like, and I'm talking about my favorite is the fat model. The slim model, like with when you press the button in the tray, kind of flipped up. It was like, eh, it was okay. I think that model let you connect to the internet. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think you could do that on the big fat model, but the fat model was cool. And it had the light up buttons of like blue and green. You hit the button to make the tray come out and you put the disc in, put it back. It was so cool. 
And so that's why I really love the PS2. Just the jump from it, the memories from it, how I, we even got one. We finally got one. I, I talked about how um, we didn't have one. We eventually got one for Christmas. Seems like I got all most of my consoles on Christmas, but uh, anyways, uh, now that I'm thinking about it, uh, but what it what happened was, and I'll tell you the game. This is why this is significant. Also, um, we ended up there was a giant box um, in our living room, and uh, for Christmas, and it had me and my brother's name on it because we had to share. Um, my brother was older than me, and. Um, it had uh, my my name and my brother's name on it, and we're like, what? The? And I'm like, what is in this giant box? You know, I'm like, this is crazy. I'm like, what are we getting? And then it ended up being the PS2. I don't even, and I can't remember exactly, but either the PS2 was in the box, or the PS2 was already set up in a bed and in the, one of our bedrooms. And um, they're like, well, come on, and we'll go, like, you know, go look at it or something. And so either they, it was in there or it wasn't, but, and you know, you might be like, well, there, you know, PS2 is not that big. Wouldn't you have been disappointed? No, no, that gift was way bigger than the box it was in because it was huge. I, I wanted one so bad and we finally got one. And the game that they got to go with it was Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. The game that I had seen what, like, and I'd watched my friend play it. It came full circle. I ended up getting that game. And it was amazing. And from then on, uh, the PS2 was amazing. And it's like, oh my god, I love it. It's one of my most favorite consoles of all time. Best memories. Best best upgrade from a console, in my opinion, for the most part. It's just amazing. Um, another game I wanted to just toss out there that I played on PS1 that I didn't mention was uh, The Legend of Dragoon. I'm going to throw that one out there because that was an awesome game. Uh, I didn't actually play the Final Fantasy games on PS1, by the way. Uh, I didn't end up playing those until uh, later. Uh, so I just want to throw that out there too. But uh, yeah, PS2 was freaking great. And then there was the PS3. And the PS3 was futuristic to me because it was it was this big thing. And you inserted the disc. It, it, it just went... And it was just this big thing. It just seemed so cool and futuristic and for how it sounded. And um, I finally got my dad to buy me one. And I don't remember how old I was when I got it. Maybe 16, 17. No, I wasn't. I, no, I had to have been like 15 maybe. 15, 14, 15, 16. Somewhere around that age. And we walked into, a, I believe, a GameStop. Or no, it wasn't a GameStop. It was a, it was a different kind of uh, game store though, and uh, there was one. It was used, and it was for a price. Uh, I want to be honest. My dad's a bit cheap, even to this day. Even though he makes a good amount of money now, but uh, he's a bit cheap, and um, even then, like I don't remember what the price of it was. But even then, it was kind of like. Uh, this is a lot better than what it was brand new, you know, <laughs> that's kind of what I was thinking in my head. I didn't say that to him, but I was just like, this is actually pretty cheap compared to its full price at, like, you know, $400 or whatever. I think it was like $150 to $200, somewhere around there. Um, maybe $250, uh, you know, somewhere around there. Um, and he and, and I, like, somehow got him to get it, and he ended up buying it, and I'm talking about the fat version. It, it was the... Uh, Oh god, the 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 lowest version, the lowest gigabyte model, and uh, I think that's the 32, 40 gig. It's like 40, 40 gigs or like 32, something like that. Um, that was the gigabyte amount that I had. It was the lowest one, but I was so happy to get it. It was so freaking cool, and um, it blew me away. It really did because with the PS3. You have um, you have uh, how it can play these nicer PS3 games. I'm not gonna say it was as big of a jump going from PS1 to PS2, but PS2 to PS3 was still a nice jump. They were nicer and uh, some beautiful looking games. I remember the first two games I ended up playing. I got I was playing. Um, I rented because uh, we had a video store, like I said, and I rented a lot of games from Dragon Ball um, Z Burst Limit. That game was amazing to me. It was so cool and looked so good. It was so awesome. 
and I just loved it. And the song that played got me so hyped. That's what made me want a PS3 so bad was that game. And uh, I love the heck out of it. I still own a copy today. Probably, I don't think it's the original copy or whatever, but I have it. I did buy it. I could only get the CD version. I couldn't get it with a case, but I do still own it. Um, but it is amazing, and I loved it. And, I, and Final Fantasy XIII, which looked in beautiful. It looked incredible. So um, those were kind of like the first couple games I played on, but a, a lot of other things was it was more like a computer because it had this big menu screen and stuff where you could scroll around. It had all these different options. You could still play PS1 games, which was really cool. I'm bummed out that you couldn't really play PS2 games. Um, not really. Like, I know on the, like, model above mine, I think it was, like, the 64 gigabyte model. I think it was that one. Um, that, um, you could download this, uh, software that kind of let you emulate PS2 games a little bit. You could put your disc in and work with some. So it kind of had that, but for the rest of the models, you couldn't really do that. So they didn't really have PS2. It's kind of a shame. Uh, I kind of wish they would have had that, but they didn't. But still, still having PS1 was really cool. You could put your DVDs and Blu-rays in still. You could, um, you know, like I said, play PS1 still. You had uh, still these options. And then you had, like I said, this whole new digital system where you could put, like plug stuff up, put your own music on there, get songs from your CDs to like play on there, you could put pictures on there, you could have even some games, you could have your music playing in the background while you played some of the games over them, which was really cool. Like, um, I'm surprised they let like people do that, but that was a really cool feature like that you could use and do that. And then not only that, but um, more realistically, I know you could do it with the PS2, but with the PS3, you could play online and it was for free. Um, there is not really a reason why Sony should make you pay to play on the PS4 online because they didn't do it on the PS3, so they're just taking money at this point, but you know what I mean. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was like really cool. You could play online, fight people. You could use the chat feature to like write people message, become friends. It was a whole new world. It was just crazy, like the technological, like, advances for what like the system could do and then like i said you could buy games on digitally you didn't have to get up you didn't have to go anywhere you just bought it and downloaded it so you could buy all these ps1 games um that would normally trying to buy them physically would cost you so like a lot and instead you could just pay like 10 bucks to get all the final fantasy games like each one of them like for PS1 and then what didn't cost you that much. So that was really like a cool thing. And of course you could buy the PS3 games um, online digitally and some digital onlys and then the DLC you could add on to the game. It was just, it was just so cool. It was so futuristic and such a huge upgrade to me. Like my favorites are like the PS2 and PS3. And uh, I'm like have trouble deciding which one I like more like with nostalgia. Oh, excuse me, with nostalgia and, um, you know, just nostalgia and the, the up jump to and the upgrades. And all. It's really hard for me to say, but I love both these consoles. I love them greatly. I, I love the fat versions of both of them. Uh, I don't like the, uh, I, I did, my PS3 eventually died. I was actually watching like anime. I was like watching the old version of Hunter x Hunter, the 1999 version. And um, uh, I was watching it one night on like YouTube. And it ended up just dying, and it was dead. It was like the yellow light of death, and there was no bringing it back to life. But later on... I